Hello. My name is Rennie Centanarese. The article which follows in this audio file I call A Scenario to Avoid and is published under fair use copyright rules, where the text remains unaltered and the name of its publisher is not being withheld from a quotation of any length. Scenario to Avoid in today's world most of the people live in urban areas, in or near big cities. There is a reason for that, that is where the money is, that is where the jobs are, that is where facilities are for recreation, shopping, transportation, utilities, entertainment, trade schools, and where universities for advanced education are, and that is where abundance in food and goods are being trucked into, or by rail shipped in, to meet the needs of a large population and a survival instinct tells the people, I must be and live where I can survive. The laws of the land are preventing the people from access to crown land, and farmland can only be had at nearly unaffordable costs to an aspiring farmer. For all these reasons mankind's situation is grim, because survival hinges on the availability of money, which calls for a man's willingness to sell his time and labor in servitude to someone else. He sacrifices his likes, accepts money-related inconveniences, and puts up with nonsense like toll booths when he drives to work, or the tax man hounding him on his meager income, or government handouts when thrown out of work, or a mortgage holder ordering him and his family out of his house when payments are no longer possible. Society then measures his success by how well he has done in surviving all these odds unscathed, and an attitude develops among people which simply says that falling between the cracks of all these hurdles in life simply makes him a loser. When respect can only be earned by how well we have done by scurrying around these cracks with our job stability and income regularity intact, then we must expect no more than absolute lack of compassion should those survival conditions ever change into unmitigated disaster. And they will. All the banker has ever to do is to make credit unavailable. What we will see then is the people will stop working, for they all expect money for their time and labor. And should the time ever come where all people will stop working as truckers, farmers, factory workers, bakers, or engineers, then I would not wish to be someone living in an urban area where nothing but a loaded gun will keep vandals from raiding your house in an attempt to steal your survival food supplies. At that time people would kill for loaf of bread, and that is the scenario we must avoid at all cost. The time has come where we must reach the people with a very simple understanding that says, keep working at what you do best, even should the time come when the financial rug is pulled out from underneath you. Don't stop for heaven's sake contributing your share to a functioning society. As we work as one unit within a society of many skills, we will by keeping working not see our food depleted from our stores which will then all become available without cost in the form of money. Grocery stores will remain open, tills will be removed, mortgages will remain unpaid, banks will be closed, high-rise towers will be emptied of useless businesses and converted into beautiful apartments, the housing crisis eliminated overnight, all bank confiscations will end, and at last society will bask in the glories of all its brain power potential, benefiting from all free energy devices, and the industrial plunder of our resources will stop. This will only come to pass as long as we will not withhold from society that portion of work we are best in. And by such loyalty to the human race we will have rewarded ourselves and propelled into the next phase of soul evolution within the realm of fifth dimensional thinking. There are two ways of getting to what I am talking about, the controlled way by someone qualified controlling the process to complete the transition within 90 days, or the uncontrolled way as the banker pulls away the financial rug from underneath you people by withholding credit. For the latter option you must be fully prepared by the simple understanding that for your own survival you must keep working. Only then will the stores not close, the factories not shut, new farm machinery remain available for farmers to till and harvest their crops, and gasoline pumps not turned off to fill your tanks with fuel. Disaster prevention in the latter case will be easy, for as long as the majority of people will not repeat the mistake they made during the depression of the dirty 30s when bank credit was withheld in a big way. Please remember the positive note of my words, if in return for free access to all goods and services provided by others, you will not withhold your own labor, 
then you will avoid the scenario which potentially can come at you in greater proportion than even the disaster of the Great Depression of our past, where thousands of unemployed workers hitched for a free ride to areas of Canada where they were still expecting to find a job for pay.